everyone and welcome to today's General Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. Happy Monday! Yay, it's Monday? Is that is that even a sentence that works? <laughs> but let's, big day on General Hospital today, so let's get right to it. At Dante's place, Olivia is back and she's ready to visit. <laughs> uh, uh, we learn that the baby's name is Leonardo, Leo for short, and Olivia asks Dante if it's true that Julian is really out of the mob because she's kind of having second thoughts and, uh, you know, she's thinking now that she's just keeping a father away from his son and Dante says that no one knows for sure, but there's been a lot of violence around that area lately. So Dante tells Olivia that someone's been going after Sonny and now two people who worked for Julian, one of them's dead and the other one is missing. And Dante and Lulu talk after Olivia leaves about how they wish that Uncle Leo could be in Rocco's life. At Julian's place, Julian is very angry with someone on the phone, and it was Bobby on the phone telling him Lucas and Brad called the wedding off. Uh, Julian thinks that he hasn't been there enough for Lucas, and Alexis kind of questions whether Julian is really out of the mob. Um, and he tells her that this time it's different and he's really changed. Uh, Julian talks about uh, um, the baby and how the loss of his son really has affected him. And Julian says that the baby would have been three months old today and it's been on his mind a lot more than he's let on. And he and Alexis have, Alexis have a really kind of touching talk about how much he's been hurting and how he didn't want to like burden her with it. And then there's a knock on the door and it's Olivia. So... That'll be interesting tomorrow. At Sunny's place, Jordan goes to see Sunny. They talk about Julian's men, or, you know, the one guy dying. And before she leaves, she wants to talk about TJ. Jordan tells him that he won, and he said it wasn't about winning. He was taking TJ in for Sean. And he tells him that he and Carly are actually, actually urging TJ to let her back into his life. And then Sunny tells her that they're on the same side when it comes to business and when it comes to her son. So, that's interesting. At Elizabeth's place. Oh, Elizabeth. <sighs> what a tangled web we weave, right? So Nicholas calls Elizabeth and tells her he moved Hayden in and her memories really do seem to be gone. And Elizabeth tells Nicholas that Jake proposed and then she tells him what Jake told her and that Sam and Jake are investigating him, digging up dirt on him from Michael. So she couldn't be trusted with that secret for more than, what, two hours? It's been, what, two hours in general hospital time? You proved yourself trustworthy. So she th she tells him that they think he has a link with Hayden and that they also think he knows who Jake really is. She abruptly ends the call with Nicholas because she hears Jake and he asks who it was and then apologizes and it's like, you don't have to tell me who's on the phone. You don't have to tell me who he's talking to because he's a really great guy. And uh, she tells him she was talking to Nicholas and he knows that Sam and him have been investigating him. And then she tells uh, him that she told Nicholas because she got so upset when she mentioned, when Jake had mentioned that Nicholas might know who he is and then she just let everything slip. Oops. Um, so she tells Jake that Hayden is staying with Nicholas now and Liz tries to play it, play it off like he's good guy Nicholas, you know, just watching. So if Hayden remembers anything, she doesn't have a chance to con anyone with it. And Jake's like, yeah, or he wants to keep her quiet. And Elizabeth's like, she wasn't expecting that. <laughs> um, she puts on some stop, some sob story about how Nicholas would tell her the truth because she told him they were engaged and he would tell her his identity so that way uh, the boys and her wouldn't be devastated if it all came out after they were married, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so Jake says there's nothing that could take him away from her. And let me give you my thoughts on this real fast. So a couple was, if this had all come out a couple months ago when it looked like it might, uh, that Jake might have stayed with Elizabeth. There's no guarantee he would have gone back to Sam because at that point he had feelings for Elizabeth and what's ultimately going to break them up when this whole thing comes out is that Elizabeth has been hiding his identity and from him and lied to him and 
on top of that, like, she was the only one he's been able to trust, like, fully trust since he got to town. So he's going to literally have all that ripped away from him. That's what's going to make it so horrible and that he's never going to want to talk to her again. So she needs to, like, figure her life out and not blame him. Because when this all goes out, because here, it's this next part. Jake says that even if he learned his real name, it wouldn't change how much he loves her. And the man he is now will always love her until the day he dies. Um... I feel like that, that, like, would have held true, but, I don't know, with everything, like, she's pretty much, without a cell, but keeping him prisoner, by, like, withholding all this information, he's basically her prisoner, like, her and Nicholas, like, you know what I mean? Like, they're hiding, oh, I can't, I had another point with this, but... I can't think of it right now. At Windermere, so Hayden is remembering the whole vase scene when her, with, well, ah, she's remembering the whole vase scene uh, while Nicholas is on the phone. And Nicholas comes back into the room. Hayden asks him if the vase was part of a pair, and he says yes, and the other one broke. It was an accident. And she goes, no, it wasn't, because I remember breaking it. Oh, my God, you're going to get yourself killed. Uh, so he tries to cover, saying their relationship was always tumultuous, and she said someone else was in the room with them when she threw the vase. He says, maybe it was Rosalie. She says, no, I just saw Rosalie, and there's nothing wrong with my short-term memory. Uh, but it was the three of us in some kind of battle, what we were fighting about. So he tells her the woman was someone he was previously involved with, and Hayden was so upset because she didn't like that. One of his exes was coming to visit him. And Hayden asks... Oh, I remember... <laughs> remember my point from before. Um, Hayden asks if her feelings were one-sided or if he cares about her too. One second. At the hospital, so finally this whole thing is kind of cleared up. Uh, the Brad, Lucas, and Rosalie ordeal. So Brad was moved to Iowa by his adoptive family. He went to Miami for college where he met Rosalie. It was at some 70s night. They started hanging out. He came out and, he, well, he, like, came out. He didn't just, like, come out. He came out, and she supported him. They were besties. His parents saw them hanging out together and assumed they were together. Uh, he was too afraid to tell his parents the truth, and they wound up getting married. Weird, but it's what happened. Uh, he says the whole relationship was superficial just for his parents' sake, and they had lost touch over the years. And Lucas questions why Rosalie married Brad, because, okay, fine, it makes sense on Brad and Brad's end, but why did Rosalie marry Brad? So she doesn't actually really answer. Uh, Brad intervenes, and Lucas wants to know why he hid it from him. Uh, Rosalie steps in and says because uh, he wouldn't understand. He questions them and says, you know, what have you been doing all these years? You haven't been visiting your parents. You don't have kids. And he's, like, angrier than he's ever been. And Lucas says that if Brad loves him, then get a divorce and deal with his parents. And Brad says that he's not going to do that. He says that his parents aren't the reason he can't get a divorce. Um, he says, okay, he says if his pet or okay. Brad says his parents aren't the reason he can't get a divorce. And Lucas says that if Brad doesn't tell him everything right now, he's going to walk away and pretend like Brad is a complete stranger like he never met him before. So Brad tells him the reason he and Rosalie have to stay married is so that they never have to testify against each other in a court of law. So I think we're finally starting to uncover Rosalie's secret a little bit because this has to be part of Rosalie's secret. So, yeah. Unless Rosalie's secret was that she's married. No. No, I mean, obviously they did something really bad, or she did something really bad, and he witnessed it or something. Um, yeah. So, that's interesting. Uh, thank you for vi watching today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And we are in the last, like, three days or so of our Indiegogo campaign, so if you could check out the link down below, that would mean so, so much to me. We also are starting a you caring account. I will put the link in that starting, like, tomorrow-ish. We're really just trying to close it, you know, end this Indiegogo thing first, uh, but I will see you tomorrow for more General Hospital, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!